Welcome back. It's me, Ms. Chambers. We're here to learn how to start beading on our moccasins. So today we're going to learn the medallion method. Let's get started. First, let's take a look at where we're headed. This is going to be our finished design. I have my beads. I have thread, scissors, my beading needle, and my prepared pattern with the adhesive backing. If you have questions about any of this, just check out this other video and you'll get caught up. To begin, we need to start by threading our needle and tying a knot. I'm going to show you a fancy way to do that. While you're following along, I am going to be drawing the steps also on this whiteboard so that you have a reference in case anything I'm doing here is not totally clear. Threading the needle. So this drives my students crazy because the eye of a beading needle is very small. What I like to do is hold the thread so tightly I can't even see it and then roll my thumb and finger back until I can just see the end and I can wiggle the end of the needle over the thread. There it is. I'm going to pull that through and I'm going to leave it so that there's a short tail and a long tail. I don't need this anymore and the length of the thread is maybe about 50 to 60 centimeters, about two, two to three feet. Okay, to tie the knot now, this is the fun part. I've got the needle in one hand and the end of the thread in the other, and they're pointing towards each other. I'm going to hold on to the end of the thread with my needle hand, wrap it around a few times, and hold that whole swirl in place, and then pull it out and it'll tie a perfect little knot very close to the end of the, th of the thread. Okay, to get started, I like to really anchor my thread. I do that because if I don't anchor it and I sew a bead on, sometimes that anchor, that bead will slip off when the knot slides through the fabric over time. To anchor the thread, I'm going to start my design right in the center here. So that's where I need to anchor my thread. I'm coming up from the bottom, just off center, and then back down about the distance of one bead away, and then back up one last time. Now that thread is really anchored, I'm not just relying on the knot to keep it in place. Okay, let's get my yellow beads ready. I'm using a little scrap of leather from my moccasins from when I cut those out to prevent the beads from rolling away. I've seen people use bottle caps and saucers. Whatever you have on hand will be just fine. Because we're sewing the middle of this, we just need to do the one single bead first that will make the very center of our flower. So I put one bead on my needle and then I let it slide all the way down until it's resting on my project here. Then I can follow the stitch that I had for my anchor and put my needle right back down to hold that bead in place. Now another trick that came from experience is that if I'm ever sewing a single bead on, I sew it on twice. Because over time, if there's just one thread going through it, I find that it loosens and that bead turns into a dangler. So I'm just retracing my steps, coming up beside the bead, going through the bead, and back down. There it is. There's my very first bead. Next, I'm going to do concentric circles radiating out from that, cent that middle bead. This is what I call the medallion method because you could keep going infinitely and make a big dinner plate size medallion. Okay, I'm coming up now beside the first bead because I'm going to do that row all the way around. So coming up beside the first bead and then I'm going to put seven beads on my needle. I've got my seven beads. I'm going to do similar to what I did before, which is to let them fall all the way down onto my work. Then I'm going to go right back down where I came from. And you'll see 
for now, they look sort of ugly. They're sort of standing up. But if I use my thumb to smush them, you see how they make a nice little halo around that center bead? Now comes the fun part, I need to sew them down. To sew them down, I'm not gonna go through the beads. Instead, I'm gonna sew down the thread that runs through the beads. How? Well, I'm gonna come up inside my latest circle. I'm going to hop my thread over top of those beads between two of them like flossing teeth. And then go back down to secure them. Then I'm going to continue to do that about every other bead, every second bead, all the way around my circle. Up between the two rows that we just finished, hop over and back down to sew down the thread that runs through the beads. your work will be more centered. So there, I've got two rows done. As you can see from here, there are four concentric circles. The first bead in the middle, then the row we just did, then another row, and finally the fourth largest row. So I'm going to continue. Starting my next row, I'm gonna come up about one bead's width away from my last row and pull this through. Now I'm gonna need about 15 beads and then I'll show you how we decide if 15 is the right number. Okay, I've got my 15 beads here and I'm gonna let them all fall down onto my, my work. Now, to see if 15 is going to be the right number, I will test them by laying them on top and seeing, do they make it all the way around? Do they make it not quite? Are there too many or too few? And I'm gonna say I probably need one more to make it all the way around. Then I'll do the same thing as I did for the last row, which is to go right back down where I came, which will cause them all to stick up in a loop. And then I push them down so that they form a ring around the last row. And then every other bead, I'm going to sew down the thread that runs between them. That means coming up between our last two rows, hopping over, back down, and doing that every other bead. And there it is. You may have guessed what's coming next. We've got one more row to do to make it to the edge of that flower circle. So once again, Coming up on the outside of our last row, Ooh, there we go, about one bead's width away. This time I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add about 21 beads and see if that's enough. Okay, I've got all my beads on there. Now I'm going to test. Do I have enough? Do I have too many? I can check and see if... I need to add more. I think I do. Yeah, I'm gonna add about four more. Then I'm gonna go back down where I came up, just like I've done before, and I'm gonna sew those little guys down just as I've done before. And there you have it. That's the medallion method. So that's just making larger and larger circles around a center bead. You can see here, it looks quite lovely when it's all done. Now I wanna finish off this thread because it's getting a little bit short. So how do we finish it off? Well, you can tie a knot if you feel so inclined. I like to just take a little pinch of the fabric, not enough that I can see it on the good side, and run it through three or four times through just a sliver of the fabric to bury the thread. It's sort of a, a lazy knot, but it does the job. 
kind of like anchoring your thread over and over. There. Now I'm free to cut that off. And I'm also going to unpin because it's going to stay there now. Looks great. All right, so now you are well on your way. Next time we're going to learn to do the inchworm method, then single needle, double needle, and you will have everything you need.